YouTube, what is up? Y'all already know who it is, man. It's DTV, and I'm back with another banger in today. I'm going to be checking out Joey Diaz, True Friendship at a Memorial Service. But before we go any further, I need you to do me a solid. If you could drop a like and a comment on this video for the algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it. Listen, we are on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and we almost there. But I need your help. So if you're watching my content, enjoying my content, but you're not part of the family yet, we got to change that. So smash that subscribe button and hit the bell too. But uh, y'all ready for this one? Let's run it, baby. Let's get it. Let's go. And she'd be in there watching like novellas with a scale, a bag of coke, a gun, and a motherfucking chihuahua. You understand? <laughs> Who fucking has a chihuahua for protection? <laughs> oh, shit. That was some dope ass editing right there. Thank you. On this show, here's what happens. There's a bunch of comics telling true stories, and that's all it is. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Joey Diaz. Coco was good. When I was a kid, my mom had a bar, and she was popular, so she had a lot of like girlfriends that hung out with her, like hot girls. But there was this one chick that she used to be kind of tight with that I couldn't fucking understand with the friendship, like they would be on the phone all day, they would talk five times a day. If my mother was in the city, she would stop by a house. And then as I got older, I got the backstory that they knew each other in Cuba. And then uh, this lady's name was Z. That's what we're gonna call her for this fucking story. Because <laughs> the names have changed to protect the innocent, all that shit. <laughs> so uh, they came from Cuba and Z married some dude and went to Chicago. My mom opted, went to New York, and like six months into the marriage, the, the guy was beating the hell out of Z, and my mom and my dad drove down there and saved her in the middle of the night and took her to New York, and she was indebted to them. And this is like 19 fucking 60. And, you know, as long as I remember, my mom used to go there, and I like going over to where she lived, because she went on to become a huge drug dealer in New York. <laughs> Right? <laughs> on 113th and 5th Avenue in the mouth of Spanish motherfucking Harlem, right? Right, and it right. It was scary. It was like The Walking Dead. You see, like, Puerto Ricans walking around, <laughs> people fucking nodding on the sidewalks. It was just amazing oh, as a little shit. kid to see this. Fuck the circus and the zoo. These are real fucking animals, like, hanging around, laying in their own puke and shit. It's fucking tremendous. So, I like going there too, cause she always gave me like a 20 or a 50. As young as I was, she always dropped, and she always did a blast of coke, no matter where the fuck she was, you understand me? <laughs> so I would go over there, she'd pick me up, kiss me, and then go in her bra, do a line, and ask me how school was, and she went to my first communion. She did a bump kneeling down in the fucking thing. She don't give a fuck, that's a real crazy lady. Not one of these ladies with a tattoo and a hat with a feather. I'm so crazy. No, you're not, all right? <laughs> no, you're not. You go to yoga at Studio City. You ain't that fucking crazy, all right? <laughs> fucking crazy. Go to yoga in Compton, bitch, and then we'll talk. So, go into her house, guys. She lived on the second floor of a bodega. And this is at the mid-70s. You know, you knocked on Z's door and a black guy opened the door and he points you to the back. And I knew was, I would run to the back and she lived like in a, like in, she had like maybe three uh, rooms, you know, like a living room, but where she sold coke out of and heroin was this little room that had like beads in the front. Like, you know, you opened it up and shit. And she'd be in there watching like novellas with a scale, a bag of coke, a gun, and a motherfucking chihuahua. You understand? <laughs> Who fucking has a chihuahua for protection? A gangster, she bro. She was dark Cuban, so she had big tits and an ass. Like, she was good looking, but she had blonde hair. It was tight. 30 years before Little Kim. I mean, she was way ahead of her fucking time. <laughs> Finally, like in the eighth or ninth grade, I figured out, you know, they were just good friends. They spoke all the time. Then my dad, my mom died. And she was the first phone call I made. And she was the first one there, you know. She made all the funeral arrangements. 
you motherfuckers been to regular viewings with Gentiles where they sit around and cry and it's like, oh, he was such a great man. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Then there's Irish fucking wakes where people are drinking and cursing. And, but then there's Cuban wakes. That makes an Irish wake look like a fucking daycare, okay? <laughs> they drink 24 and it's open 24 hours. 24 hours funeral parlor. And anything oh, goes. Damn. People are doing lines, people are arguing, people are playing dominoes, people are playing fucking dominoes at my mother's fucking wake, okay? Yeah, that's why, bro. Night, I hear this commotion and I go in the hallways. Z had the funeral director by the throat because she put the wrong dress on my mother. Oh, that is shit. a fucking friend, motherfucker. Right, right, right. right. Like, even because anybody could be a fucking friend when you're alive. But to fucking be at your funeral smacking motherfuckers, right? <laughs> That's a friend, right? <laughs> That's a fucking friend, you know? And she was checking people. Like, hey, fuck you. You didn't like her, and she didn't fucking like you. Oh, yes! She was checking people, Yo. you know? Z was a real one. I got I got goosebumps off of that shit, bro. Cause the thing is, like, people want to come around after the fact, after you're no longer here. And the reality of it is, where the hell were you when 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 we was alive? You know what I mean? I talked to you in in ages, in months, years, whatever the case may be. And now you want to pull up, yo! Shout out, shout out to Z, bro. You know what I mean? Shout out to Z for holding it down for Joey Diaz's mom. Let's run it. Uh, and she didn't fucking like you. Get out. She was checking people, you know, and all these people in there, oh, we love Dinor and all this shit. You didn't hear shit from this lady. You didn't hear a word. There was no fakeness out of her. Right there, I learned what fake was and what real it was. At that early age, I learned. That's fire. That That's fire. And people come up to me, oh my God, if you need anything. And after my mom died, I call them and they change their fucking phone number. Mm. But just little things that I saw right there and I decided, oh my God, that's what a fake person is. I yep. love your mother. Oh God, take me. All that shit. You know, the whole fucking four days of the wake, Z didn't say shit. She would every once in a while just sit in the back and just... Yeah, that's that's some real shit, man. You know what? I'm not even gonna speak on that, bro. Let me let me let me just run it back. We'll keep going. He didn't say shit. She would every once in a while just sit in the back and just take a little bump out of her bra <laughs> <laughs> and look at me and go. <laughs> and she would just watch what was going on. Even and, and she was such a woman, like men would be having conversation. I'm not talking about regular fucking guys. I'm talking about Latin, old school, machismo motherfuckers. Okay. And she would okay. go tell them shit. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, even they were scared of her. And I observed all this, like how she had taken over from my mother. And then the last night, my mom got buried on a Monday. And that Sunday, I went outside to smoke a joint. Whatever the fuck you go outside of a wake for to get air. <laughs> and when I came back, she was alone with my mother. It was the first time they were alone together. And she was kneeling down. And that's why I got it. She was uh, petting her hair. And she was telling her how beautiful she was. Damn. And how the world wasn't going to be the same without her. And how she was going to miss her. And she was her sister. And it was just fucking mind-boggling. And then she said, and she turned, like she knew I was there. And she goes, I'm going to take care of this motherfucker. I'm gonna take care of him, I'm gonna watch over him, I'm gonna make sure he grows up to be a fucking man. And, and, and I saw the meaning of friendship right there when Z was petting the fucking hair and doing bumps. She did a fucking bump right there. Right? <laughs> she did a bump looking at the cast and she's like, I'd give you one, but. <laughs> What's the difference at this point? Oh, shit. But then it was after that, she stuck to her fucking word. Every Sunday, she'd come off from Long Island and meet me at Weehawken Cemetery. And she'd bring a bottle of doers, flowers, and she'd pour the bottle of doers out and tell my mother how much she loved her and she missed her and she'd do some bumps. And then by that time, I was doing coke. And she would like do bumps into the spirit, like, here's a couple for you. And I'd be like, no, let me give some fucking things to me. <laughs> You're gonna fucking throw them on the grass. It's $20 a fucking blast there. Oh, shit. $20, $20, $20. Stop it already. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this went on. She took care of me, guys, from 79 till 83 till I got out of high school. Every fucking Sunday, 200 fucking beans. And she'd bring oh, wow. me weed, a little $5 nickel bag from the city. And then in 83, I moved to Colorado. And you know I got into craziness and shit. But I always called her twice a week. I would send her pictures, you know. And then I moved back to Jersey. 
And by that time, I was a fucking lunatic, you know, and cocaine had absorbed me and stuff. And I kept in touch with her, and I would go into the city once a week and take her for a Cuban sandwich. There was a place on 118th Street we walked. And uh, I went and, and I went to Miami, and I found some friends of hers, and I beat them for like a half a kilo, and I just felt fucking bad. You know how it is, dog. <laughs> one bump leads into another. Next thing you know, you're having a party. Next thing you know, you did six ounces of blow. It's a fucking nightmare. You know what I'm he saying? Said, he said, you know how it goes, man. Maybe not everybody there does. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's no rehabs. There's no hugs. You know? <laughs> they don't give a fuck. You know? That's it. So I felt embarrassed. I came back from Miami and I had fucked these people over. I felt embarrassed. So I didn't call. I didn't call her for like five months. Oh, wow. In January of 85, I finally got a little sober and I called her one day and I goes, Z, what's going on? And she's like, where the fuck have you been? She goes, you haven't called me in like five months. She goes, the cops raided me. They took me everything. She goes, my leg broke and there was nobody here for me. Oh, shit. And I felt fucking terrible. I let my mother down. I let myself down. I let Z down. And I was at a payphone. And I just dropped the fucking payphone. It was like a kick in my stomach. Like she had just said, you know, where the fuck were you for me? For all those years, I was there for you. And you just wow. disappeared. And I, was, I just felt terrible. And I... I walked away from the payphone. I didn't call her for about a week or two. And then I finally called and the phone was disconnected. And I went over to the bodega a few times and they told me that she got bust and they closed the apartment. And I never talked to her again. And I, and I felt like shit. And I live with that today. And uh, wow. that was 1985, you know? And I thought about it and I digested it and I swore to God that if I ever had a chance to be a friend to somebody, because you don't need 20 friends. You just need three motherfuckers and you could take over a country. Facts. Okay, Big that's fucking what we're facts, bro. As Americans, we think we need all these motherfuckers. You give me three bad motherfuckers, and you're finished. You understand me? Real shit. You're fucking real shit. finished. Because he's not we got lying, each bro. Other. He's not and, lying. And uh, you know, listen, man. Uh, like Ari, Ari's my fucking goomba to the end. He might be a Jew or whatever, and I'm Cuban, <laughs> but that's my fucking goomba, and he knows that's why I'm here, not because whatever, but. You know, I promised that I would be a, a, a friend to people and I would live and die for them. And, you know, when I look at people now, I always look at people sometimes and I go, how's that motherfucker going to feel when I die? Is he going to be talking shit at my funeral? Or is he going to squeeze my daughter and, and come see her every week and give her a toy? You know, and that's how I have to look at people. That's how I was that's raised. Deep, you know? That's deep, that's, man. That's real deep. And I always live with that guilt of not doing something for my friend. And then in 2007, I got off the blow. I quit doing cocaine. Don't ask, you know, don't clap. Nobody's supposed to do it anyway, you know. People are like, I'm off drugs. You're an asshole. You're not supposed to do drugs anyway, okay? <laughs> don't fucking break your arm tapping yourself in the back, asshole. Oh, so, uh, shit. Keep it in a stack. Right or wrong? These motherfuckers walk Damn. around with their water. I'm sober now. Who gives a fuck? You know, <laughs> you know two months ago, you were sucking dick for rock at the Roxy. Oh, now shit. I got to fucking shake your hand. Fuck you. Oh my God! <laughs> Motherfuckers don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I got off coke. I had been off coke like four days, <laughs> and that was tough for me. I used to go like 18 hours, and I'm like, ooh, <sighs> that's a long fucking time, you know? I was clean for four days, and a dear friend of mine died. She was a comedian. She died of cancer, and. uh there was this one producer that used to mess with us all the time here in L.A. He would have these festivals and tell us that he was going to book us and then decide, oh, no, no, I'm not hiring dirty comics this year. Why would you have to work so dirty? He'd make us feel bad about being dirty comics. We were just expressing who the fuck we were, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, 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 fuck him. Uh, I saw him then. He had messed with me and Marilyn a couple times, and I saw him at the church, right? I saw him at the church, but it was 10 o'clock. I was a little on the stone side. I said, I might as well not say nothing to know. You know, sometimes you do a bong hit before church just to calm your nerves. <laughs> you know, sometimes just one and a half, just to, you know, just to loosen you up before church. And, uh, because church sucks without a bong hit. Trust me, that's, that's why I sucked as a kid. Once you start doing bong hits, church ain't that bad. It's a fucking hour, people shake hands, they give you a cookie, you know, everybody, peace be with you, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I love this brother, yo. Right or wrong? Please be with you, brother. Please be with you. Please be with you. Be with you. So uh, that night they had a memorial at a comedy club, and when I walk into the memorial, well, they had free food at the memorial. Like this, like they had, they didn't have, they buried it that day, but they had like a microphone, 
They had a picture where you're going to go up and say words. Then they had free food. When I walk in, guess who's eating the fucking free motherfucking food? That motherfucking producer. Oh, shit. Now, by that time, I'm, it's after 8 o'clock. The cocaine addiction is growing. I'm getting madder by the minute. I'm Cuban. It's fucking just... It's just developing, right? Yeah, it's consuming them. And they come them. over to me and they go, listen, we do the memorial. Can you go up on stage first? And, and I'm like, absolutely. And I'll get my words over and I'll get the fuck out of here. So I go home and go to sleep before I choke this motherfucker too, right? <laughs> so they said, Joe, come into the stage, Joey Diaz. I go on stage, people, you know me. I talk for like a minute and, I can't, and this motherfucker's over there with that smile on his face. You know when somebody's got like that smile on their fucking face? Oh, I know what you're talking memorial, about. I just stopped. And I go, I don't know what the fuck you're smiling about, motherfucker, you know? But I tell you what, I'm gonna go get a drink, and when I get back, you, your wife, and that fucking attorney better get the fuck out of here, because I'm gonna fuck you motherfuckers up. And I was serious, Jack. Damn. I was fucking serious. Like, he pulled the Z, bro. Like, seven days without a line of coke. This motherfucker, this is my out. I'll beat him up, and then fucking they'll throw me in county jail for 30 days. By the time I got out, I'll be clean and sober. I mean, that was my fucking. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you gotta think when you're fucking addicted, how I was. You know? Oh, shit. But I was really pissed about what this motherfucker had done to me and to Marilyn and how he had the balls to show up at this fucking wake with that smile on his fucking face. Right, and right. As I went to the drink and I came back in and him and his fucking family were gone. When I walked to my car, I thought about one thing that I'm through. I, I, I did what I had to do without even knowing. I stuck up for one of my friends who had died. And yeah. that night, I became that much better as a human fucking being. I made my peace with Z. I made my peace with my mother. And most importantly, I made my peace with myself. And that's my story about that. Good shit, man. Good shit. I rocked with that. I rocked with that. Sound off in the comments below. Let me know what is next from Joey Diaz. And I get to it ASAP. But yo, I'm going to end this video right here. If you made it to the very end, you're the real MVP, baby. No cap. If you enjoyed this video, y'all know what to do. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, gang. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Peace.